Hey, what's up, viewers? It's your boy MC Red Lips, and I want to welcome you to this episode of The Experience. You know how the show is like every week we bring up a topic and people share their various experiences on the topic. I promise you that this episode is going to be interesting, mind blowing, and educating. So sit back, relax. When we come back, we're going to hit the topic for the week. Yeah, welcome back, viewers. Yeah, it's still your favorite show, The Experience. And for this week, we are going to be discussing your experience with the police. We called it the police experience. It could be good, it could be bad. It could go anyway. But for this week, we got a lot of response. And um, from all our response, we just picked three very interesting stories to discuss for this week. And quickly, before we go straight to the stories that came in, I'm going to tell you my short experience with the police. You know, one day I was coming back um, from an event where I went to Angkor, and in the process, we came across the police on the way. I was with my laptop, and these guys saw my laptop and asked me for the receipt. Unfortunately, I wasn't with it. But I opened it and showed them files that way back five years in the laptop. They still wasn't convinced, and they seized it. So I had to travel down to Lagos, and came back to um, Delta State with the receipt. Guess what? When I got to the station and I told them I'm now with my receipt, they told me that, sorry, the laptop is far away and they can't give it to me. Even with my receipt, they told me they needed transport. I was there and I was like, I know my rights. And they said, okay, let's exercise your right. And I was there for another four hours. When I got tired, I had no option but to walk up to the police and said, okay, where is this location? And they said they needed 5000 for fuel to go to the location to get a laptop. Okay, funny enough, I gave them 3000 finally and they took it. And in less than three seconds after the 3000 naira was given to them, my laptop that was far away that needed transport appeared from nowhere. It was a wonderful experience. But anyway, thank God I came out with my laptop. And that is what a Nigerian man would say. We don't emphasize our rights. Okay, that was my own police experience. So I want you to sit back, relax. When we come back for the break, we're going to hear from our viewers. Their experience with the police. It's going to be interesting, even much more than you expect. Stay cool. So welcome back, viewers. I told you today's show is going to be interesting. I'm going to be taking my first story from Akere. Akeri Paul sent this story straight up to us, his experience with the police. This happened um, somewhere in the south. It was just, it was, an, it was a very good day. He was on his own, preparing to travel abroad. And he came across the Nigerian police. Let's hear a story. <laughs> This particular incident happened in 2017. Then I just got newly admitted to study abroad, you know, and it happened in Edo State Municipality around Ramat Park area. That day I was trying to do some shopping for myself because I was to travel to this time outside Nigeria. And then on getting to Ramad Park on my way back from forestry, some policemen at Ramad Park they stopped the usually it's just a normal stop here car, these taxi guys they stop and passengers come down or get into the car. And the policemen they just spotted me and told me to come out of the car and I came out and they asked the taxi man to leave. And I was there all alone. I was really confused. And then they came to me and asked me, um, who am I? What do I do? I explained to them that this is what I am. This is what I have been doing. And also told them of my current situation that, um, I'm international students. I'm just trying to prepare right now to, um, 
do some things for myself regarding my journey. Even show them my phone, show them my admission letters and stuff like that, you know, just to clarify myself and everything. I never knew these guys, they have another motives in their mind. They searched my bag and they saw a laptop charger in it. Because the laptop charger, I just got that one too. And they asked me, um, where is the laptop for the charger? And I told them that the laptop to the charger was with the repairer. Because I just um, had to get myself a laptop there. And they were working on it, so I had to get the charger and stuff like that. And like, it's there. And before you know it, they said I have to get into their vehicle that we are going to where the charge to the laptop is. I was like, okay, if that's a problem, no, no, no shakings, let's go. And they were going, I already told them that this place was in Adwawa, I live in Adwawa, you know, and we had, we entered another car, another taxi. I think that taxi was a taxi that they specially, um, rent for their dubious activities you know and then on our way going we did not actually divert to Adwa. we are just going straight and because i know the area very well i knew the direction they were going to they were actually taking me to the police station but i just kept quiet and waited for them to make the turn that leads to the police station and while in the car they were asking for my phones they asked for my wallet, they, you know, they were checking my phone and they checked my wallet, saw the ATM cards there and everything. And they were like asking me, why am I having um two ATM cards? I'm like, ah, these are my bank account. So it's normal for everyone to have the ATM card and stuff like that. And they were like, okay. And then I'm like, wait, wait a minute. This is not the road to Adwawa. Why are you guys taking me here? And the driver, I'm like, no, this is the road to the police station. Why are you taking me to the police station? They were like, yeah, they have to take me on that detention, that I'm a suspect, this and that, I'm a yow boy, and like that. And I just laughed. I'm like, I already explained to you guys what I am. But however, I understand what you guys are looking for. But the idea is that um, I am not who you say that I am. But because of your time and everything, because I really wanted to get out of that situation. Like, because of your time and everything, I just want to appreciate you guys and that's it. And these guys opened their mouth and told me to give them 50,000 Naira. I'm like, what? 50,000 Naira for what? I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. However, whatever is in me right now is actually not mine. I'm just trying to make sure that things are okay for my destination I'm preparing for. But however, I just have 5,000 Naira here to give to you guys. But in the end, I gave them 10,000 Naira. And after they received the money from me, they started trashing out from their mouth, words of advice and nonsense statements, you know. And then after the, the, they are gone, the driver, the um, taxi driver that took me back to the junction from where I found my way home, was also saying I should try to be careful that these guys are looking out for people that are really dressing so well and looking so nice to to devolve that that's what they do to get money from them I was like okay thank you very much and so on so that's my experience <laughs> You see, they can incriminate you for no reason. And that, that, that was a painful one by Akiri Paul. But it's all good. You see, it can happen to you anytime. And the importance of watching and following this show is to let you know the best decision to take when you come across an experience with this course. So it educates you. I'm going to be taking my second story from Jerry Neal. Yes. Jerry Neal was this um, very innocent, good-looking man who traveled just to get a gadget from a particular market and unfortunately, he came across the police. The experience was emotional. I would just like you to hear from his own lips. Let's see. I was just a student who schooled in the East. I and my friends went to Benin to do a plaque, a world plaque. 
getting there. The man said he couldn't collect transfer, so we had to go to the ATM to withdraw the cash. Right at the ATM stand, this police van parked by. And then they called us. And then, well, they were asking us to identify ourselves. We were thinking maybe they really wanted our identity. So my friend just brought out his uh, ID card. And then by then we showed them our student ID card. The next thing we had was a hot slap. I was slapped on the face for showing them the student ID card. And then they told me, if you don't mind yourself, we will break this ID card. We have forgotten and nothing will happen. Ah. That was when we were shocked. And then we're taking down, they put us in the van. Before they took us away, they asked us to check our account balance. Luckily for us, we didn't have much. My friend was having a hundred and something. And me then, based on the school I was going to, I attended a private school then in the east, in Anambra State. And the school, my school fees was still inside my account. That was 300,000. When they saw it, they said we are G-boys. And we are this and we are that. You won't believe that they took us to somewhere and we, I don't even know being in that month, but I knew we were taken somewhere. And then they told us that if they don't, if we don't release, if we don't pay them, they will not release us. That they will take us to the station and blah, 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 blah. I and my friends got worried. We had to give them 80,000 naira that day to release us. That experience was not funny because right now I still feel the slap on my face. I feel I felt very demoralized that period because I was wondering how can Nigerian police, people who have been paid to protect us, be the ones that are actually harming us? Wow, ladies and gentlemen, my honorable viewers. I think with this second story, we are convinced that you can fall into trouble even when you are not looking for trouble. So that's why we must pray for grace. And that's one important reason why you must always watch this show so you can always have an idea of how people came out of their various experiences. So when you come across one, you don't need to learn the hard way. Now, my third and my final story. This one is very confusing. He, he, he actually tagged this one uno man and you should you should be able to relate you know okay quickly let's hear from ray lord ray he sent the third story and it was his police experience and he tagged it who no man we will know the importance of knowing man after watching this i'm ray of cyber name i want to talk about police incident that i encountered yesterday i was driving down from Kenu to the house i went to pick my elder brother and um, my friends and we were there were three at the back i think i think three at the back then me that was driving and my elder brother so as i was driving i met a policeman on the road and i think his name is um, officer yusuf I remember so he was like saying that this is a coronavirus period why am i carrying three at the back and no social distancing and the rest. Also, we are all families. If you know somebody like that, is in our is in our family. At least we don't call us. So he he was like, no, I have to. I don't have to teach him his job. I'll go with him to the station. I was, ah, I don't understand. Now in that okay. Now where is your driver's license? I said, I went to do my driver's license, but because of this COVID nineteen that is on board the people are not working so i can't be staying in the house without driving and i must go somewhere so from there there we waited to it's take my time for most almost an hour i was begging okay please eh let's just go and drop them then i'll come back and come and see you personally and because it's in my estate too my estate don't be so mad my estate the day so i was like okay 
now that you have held me captivity okay let me call the owner of the my boss that usually drives his car because he's so effort so like who is the effort man that is my other brother so let me call him so i have to call my boss and i have to walk down to the place he just showed them my card i said they leave also he no even talk we don't talk i say guy yeah, if you not be if you don't know person for this country eh? yeah you need to know somebody I guess you enjoyed that other story. The last one was from Ray, and I and I believe you you understood the importance of knowing man. You see, when he called on somebody who he knew, who he had the contact in his phone, the situation changed. So this is a very great opportunity for us to learn from people's experience. Next episode is promising to be big, big, super, and interesting. And um, I, I I promise you, if you follow us subscribe to our channel follow us on instagram as you can see on the screen you are not going to regret it we're going to be talking about our spiritual encounter in our next episode yeah that's it for this week the experience i want you to stay good be good and learn from people's experience so you don't learn the hard way i remain your humble host mc red lips also known as ashipa stay good be good peace